actually a 35-yard pickup on the play for Rashad Jones making the tackle. First down, high percentage pass. Mike Bobo calling it, uh, calling this, this game like he would a regular season game, and that's what you want to do on first down. High percentage throw, and you see Stafford putting it right on the money. Chris Durham, the junior out of Calhoun, Georgia High School, making the catch and the run, and Rashad Jones, the redshirt sophomore out of Washington, uh, Washington High School in Atlanta, making the tackle. So first and 10 at the 45. This is one-on-one -on -one here, the number one offense, number one defense going at it. Toss goes to Noshan Marino. He's wearing number 26 today. Picks up four yards on the play before being tackled by Geno Atkins, the nose tackle. Let's take a look at the Bulldogs on offense. The red team, the first team. Chappis, the fullback. Marino, the tailback. Chandler, the tight end. Durham and Moore are the wide receivers. And then on the offensive line, you have Sturdivant, Vance, Davis, Anderson, and Tripp. And, of course, the quarterback, Matthew Stafford, a number of first-teamers out because of injury, Muhammad Massaqua and Kenneth Harris, the wide receivers, likely the first team wide receivers not playing today because of injury. So second down, ball at the 40 yard line. And Moshe Marino has a first down and more as he makes it down to the 30 yard line before being tackled by Rennie Curran and Rashad Jones. Zone read, you're seeing a lot of these teams spreading the field, running this play all over the nation now. It's all the rage. Matthew Stafford capable of pulling that thing out and running with it, but uh, handed it off to no Sean Moreno that time. You better enjoy him while you can. I'm guessing he'll get about five carries today before he hits the sideline. 1,334 yards and 14 touchdowns for the redshirt sophomore out of Belford, New Jersey last season. This will probably be the only series that he plays. Stafford fakes the handoff, going for it in the middle, and for Michael Moore. Just a beautiful throw by Matthew Stafford. They go with a post route, and it could not have been thrown any better. Protection, excellent. He steps up. They've worked on the fundamentals. Drives toward the target, and you see a beautiful throw. Splits the defenders right on the money. All Moore had to do was go up and bring it down. So a 30-yard touchdown pass, 31-yard touchdown pass from Matthew Stafford to Michael Moore and the red team on top, six to nothing. That's Brian Bear on for the PAT, and he puts it through, and with 6.18 to play in the opening quarter, the red takes the opening drive, goes 75 yards for the touchdown, and has the early lead. Hey, Bulldog fans, check out our new look on georgiadogs.com. You'll find everything you need to be the ultimate dog fan. Get t-shirts, jerseys, and more in the online store. Follow the dogs with up-to-the-minute stats and scores through Game Watcher. Sign up for G Extra to get live audio and video, highlights, coaches' shows, in-depth interviews, and more. Now purchase your favorite Bulldog photos or make your bid at one-of-a-kind Bulldog auction. So check it out, the official athletic site of the Georgia Bulldogs, georgiadogs.com. The GeorgiaDogs.com tee shop is the ultimate destination for the University of Georgia sports fan. With a terrific selection of over 1,100 items, GeorgiaDogs.com has everything a Bulldog fan needs. Go to GeorgiaDogs.com today to get t-shirts, jerseys, hats, watches, accessories, and more. Plus, you'll get great customer service and $4.99 shipping on every order. The GeorgiaDogs.com tee shop, where Georgia fans go to shop. So the red with a 7-0 lead on the black. And now the black offense wearing the white jerseys, the black numbers, will come out and play for the first time. This is the second team offense against the second team defense. For Michael Moore, his first career touchdown reception, of course, last year against Oklahoma State. Had three catches in that Oklahoma State game, but kind of fell off the map after he had a big drop against South Carolina. He's hoping to make amends for that this season. Joe Cox, the quarterback for the black team here. You see his numbers last season for his career, 22 of 43 for 281 yards in his one career start coming against Ole Miss, the game after he led Georgia to victory against Colorado in his freshman season. Toss goes to Caleb King. Caleb King wearing number four. Not a whole lot of room for Caleb King as he picks up about a yard on the play. 
Akeem Dent on the tackle for the red team. Let's take a look at the black offense. Josh Davis, Tanner Strickland, Ben Jones. You heard Allison talk about him. Ben Harden and John Potts on the offensive line. Munzenmeyer is the fullback. Dontavius Jackson, the tailback, although Caleb King was the starter right there. Bruce Figgins, the tight end. Tavares King not playing today because of injury, and Israel Troop is the flanker. Well, got King out on a sweep and really made a nice cut. Took it outside, then planted that right foot and just took it upfield. What you want to see, some positive yardage. Don't want to take a loss on first down. Hand off to Caleb King again, and Caleb King picks up another yard. Again, Akeem Din in on his second consecutive tackle. Let's take a look at the red defense. Dobbs, Lemon, Crawford, and Wheeling up front, although there's been some changes to that since Dobbs is now playing on the black side. Dent, Gamble, and Hebron are the oh. linebackers, and uh, Brown, Banks, Knox, and Cuff in the secondary. Yeah, these spring games uh, keep you dancing, Matt Stewart. So third down and nine with the ball at the 26-yard line. Exactly. Uh, I would say you need a program to follow the action, but the program's probably not going to be right either because they've changed that since they printed it. That's just the nature of the game. Pass is complete in the middle of the field to Israel True, and he's across the 50-yard line and down to the 40. Your first chance to see Israel Troop, the redshirt freshman out of Tip County High School. Third long, you go with a spread set shotgun, and Joe Cox looking to get the ball downfield, showing great poise in the pocket. He's got a man in his face, and he throws a bullet to Troop, a kid out of Tiff County. Another tough physical kid from Tifton who's really impressed Mark Rick this uh, spring, and he's anxious to get out on the baseball field once the spring game's over today. Yeah, David Perno is anxious to get him out there on the baseball field once spring football practice. He's going to be able to help Georgia in two sports during his career. First and 10 at the 42-yard line. Cox and quarterback sack, and that amounts to a quarterback sack. There are no tackling of the quarterback, and that was – Trying to find out who that was who made the tackle right there, 92, which I don't have down on my spot chart and don't have down uh, on the red roster. Well, Joe Cox uh, and these quarterbacks uh, feel very fortunate that they won't be taking down, taking down hard to the ground today. That, that would have hurt right there. He never saw him coming. I'm thinking that that was Neyland Ball with the quarterback sack. Our roster has him down as 94, but it looks like he's wearing 92. And again, just hang with us, folks, because it changes on the fly. Ask Coach Rex when he gets up here. Caleb King on the run. Caleb King waving his way through traffic and gets down to the 33-yard line before being tackled by Ramarcus Brown. Well, you see in the natural instincts of a quality running back here. Patient, waiting for a little crease, and once he sees that crease, he's going to accelerate up in there. Caleb King looking very impressive here early on. So Caleb King, redshirt freshman out of Norcross, Georgia. You see three minutes left here in the first quarter. Playing only eight-minute quarter as they changed that just a couple of days ago from ten minutes because of the mounting injuries as Caleb King gets another carry. And Caleb King picks up a first down as he gets it inside the 30-yard line. Andrew Gully on the tackle for the red team defense. They list Caleb as 212 pounds, and I tell you the really thing I, I really impressed with on this run right here is watch him accelerate into the contact. As you take a look with Joe Cox, he's got the best view in the house there, quarterback. He accelerated into the contact. He's not afraid. Again, this kid is a physical running back. So first and 10, ball is at the 28-yard line. Two and a half minutes to play here in the first quarter. That's Marquise Brown in motion, and they throw to him right there, and Brown is run out of bounds by Brown. Marcus Brown tackling Marquise Brown, a redshirt sophomore transfer from the University of South Carolina. First down play. Again, you're looking for a high percentage pass. That's what Joe Cox did, right? They just dump it off, pick up the yardage on first down. Let's check in with Allison Williams. Well, Matt, you know we're constantly dealing with number changes in this spring game. Number 92 is Neyland Ball. And then Noshan went with number 26 today actually to honor Tony Wilson, who broke his leg in the first spring scrimmage. Those two are really tight, and he wanted to go out there and show him some respect by wearing that number 26 jersey. All right, thank you, Allison, for keeping that straight for us. Joe Cox, and that's going to go down as a quarterback sack. Let's see who got him. Was it... Uh, 
Was it Michael Lemon this time? Yeah, yeah Michael Lemon gets the quarterback sack. Ricardo Crawford also in there from that defensive tackle spot. In a, a quarterback friendly day here in the scrimmage. Quarterbacks won't get hit. See him beat two blockers there. Gets through the running back and the offensive lineman. Of course, the Georgia Bulldogs had 42 quarterback sacks last season, led by Marcus Howard, who's now hoping to land a spot in the NFL. Ten and a half quarterback sacks for Marcus Howard, and really the only season he ever played for Georgia, his fifth year senior season. Cox guns it in the middle and off the hands of his tight end, Bruce Figgins. That troop down here to the wide side of the field working one on one with a cornerback, probably a better option. Bobo will probably point that out in the uh, film meeting after this, this thing's over with today. He's trying to get it to Figgins down the middle of the field. You see him working there in the middle of your screen. Yeah, Figgins. A, little too our, a little too far out in front of him. Figgins might have taken his eye off it for a moment as Ramarcus Brown was closing in on him. And this is Andrew Jensen for what will be a 47-yard field goal attempt. Jensen, no rush on the kick, and Andrew Jensen put it through. A 47-yard field goal for Andrew Jensen out of Snellville, Georgia. And with one minute and six seconds to play here in the first quarter, the Black get on the board with the field goal. Well, I'll tell you, Caleb King is looking good, and if they can put him as a backup to this guy, no Sean Moreno, Georgia on offense is really going to have something working in the running game. Now, you see Moreno, the big touchdown run against Florida, and he just beat up on Auburn. Anybody that faced this guy is talking about him this offseason and getting ready to try to slow him down come 2008. Second best freshman football season from a rushing standpoint in Georgia history behind you know who Herschel Walker Matthew Stafford on the bootleg and Stafford will get tagged at the 30 yard line a pick up a five on the play that was CJ Bird coming over to make the tag tackle yeah Mike Bobo bragging on uh, Matthew Stafford spring really focused in on the fundamentals trying to improve and uh, make that second nature so he won't have to think about that during the game and Bragged about his running skills, too. You've seen him. Uh, I know the Auburn Tigers know all about his ability to run. And that bootleg is really one of the best plays in football. He had two touchdown runs last season. Of course, Matthew Stafford working on that footwork, ball fakes, getting the ball, driving through the pass, getting it downfield, trying to hit the wide receiver out of the break. Just the fundamental things they've worked on with Stafford, like right there where Asher Allen nearly came up with a pickoff, turned around and jump the route run by Chris Durham. Yeah, trailing him, and uh, Matthew trying to stick it in a tight window. Hearing a lot about that when you talk about Matt Ryan in the NFL draft, trying to put it in tight places. You see uh, Asher Allen, who has played uh, as well as anybody in that secondary last season and this spring. Number two is one of the leaders on this team. Yeah, Asher had three interceptions last season. Had a big spring football practice uh, a couple of years ago. He is Gave up really a touchdown and then scored on a touchdown himself. He is a phenomenal cornerback. Great return man. Really fun to watch. So ball at the 30-yard line. Stafford is going to be tagged for the quarterback sack. Stafford is brought down. Jarius Wynn will get credit for that one. Well, for the first Jarius time, this Wynn. defense uh, gets in your face and plays a little man-to-man -man coverage. Just and tight coverage on these wide receivers. Nowhere to go with the ball. Well, that's going to be the end of the first and quarter. The the first and quarter. we have completed eight Reggie minutes at Sanford Stadium with the Red leading the Black 7-0. A 30-yard touchdown pass from Matthew Stafford to Michael Moore, the lone touchdown so far. <laughs> Caveman didn't own cars. At Direct, we don't have mascots. We have real people like me who can help you spend less on car insurance. So what do y'all want me to do with this again? Affordable car insurance on your corner? From people who are in your corner. Call 1-877-GO-DIRECT or come see us today. It's impossible to replace anybody that you love. How much are you paying for AT&T phone service? Think about it. 
Now you can get phone and internet from Comcast for one low price, $49.90 a month, every month. Introducing the new, everyday, double play from Comcast. Get phone and internet together for just $49.90 per month, every month. Two great services for less than you might be paying for AT&T phone service. An offer this good doesn't come along every day. Until now, call 1-800-COMCAST and save big. So I get on the jury for this poor woman. She needs like three surgeries, can't work, and the insurance company is just trying to cheat her. <laughs> insurance. They jack up their rates, the execs rake in millions, but you got a claim, they fight you or drop you. It's just flat out wrong. How does this lady, or me, or you, you're in an accident, how are you gonna make the insurance pay what's fair? Motlick and Associates works hard to get people the compensation they deserve. Call 1-800-LAW-NEED today. In the black 7-3, the red gonna have to punt it here to start the second quarter. Mark Rick's gonna join us in just a few minutes as well, Buck. Now these aren't my tech colors. I'm honoring my right. high school Valdosta High today. Yeah. This yellow shirt. Yeah, everybody's been giving you grief. I think it's a great spring color. I yeah. think we're very pastel in our spring colors, even though the weather is kind of gray. We're trying to cheer things up with our uh, light green and, and yellow, gold as I like to call it, and I think it looks good on you, Buck. Yeah, I like the new uh, CSS logo. It's looking good. So those are not Georgia Tech. That's not Georgia Tech gold he's wearing. No, it's Valdosta High colors. Exactly. Valdosta Honoring the high school. Black today. and gold. Black and gold of the Valdosta Wildcats. Fourth and ten, and Brian Mims will kick it away. Rashad Jones will field the kick. Of course, there is no the rush and there's no return, so the line. black team's going to take over at the 30-yard line. Jones, They've now been told that Mark Vick will join us in the third quarter instead of the second quarter, so we're doing something different here in 2008. Yeah, these spring games, man, they don't keep you busy. So the ball's going to be at the 40-yard line. So that's where the uh, black team goes on offense here. Hope you're enjoying the game wherever you might be watching across the southeast. Hope you're staying dry. I could tell that the uh, rain has picked up a little bit again here as we start the second quarter. Say so it's going to move out once the game ends. Isn't that always the case? Joe Cox throwing and caught by Caleb King over his shoulder, and Caleb King gets it up to the 49-yard line, running with a little authority, Caleb King right there. And close to a first down, Vance Cuff making the tackle. Yeah, and Akeem Dent really forcing the issue. He's coming off the corner from his linebacker spot, and really a nice throw, and Caleb King showing off the total talent here. Yeah, you gotta be able to play an all-around type of game if you wanna get playing time. And you see his ability to catch the football and make something happen once he catches. Daryl Gamble was also in on that tackle. Daryl Gamble uh, bucking for some more playing time this year, a redshirt sophomore out of Bainbridge, Georgia. Tell you what, playing time's hard to get right now. There's a lot of talent on this team. Calvin Daniels with the carry for the black team as he gets it down to the 45-yard line. Calvin Daniels is a guy who has uh, really kind of burst on the scene, uh, a walk-on out of Eastman, Georgia, Dodge County High School. Yeah, numbers got a little low last year. He got a little playing time. And I'm sure everybody down in Eastman, big football area there, very proud of the job that he's done coming up here and earning some time. He ended up getting eight carries for 44 yards last season. Of course, Georgia has another running back coming in in the fall. That'll be Carlton Thomas out of Frostproof, Florida. So first and 10 at the 45-yard line. And let's see, was a timeout called or did we have a penalty? No well, flags have been dropped. Yeah, a little trouble lining up on the, uh, the with the wide receivers. So the white team calls a timeout. You take a look at what the Georgia Bulldogs replacing here. Thomas Brown, who rushed for close to 800 yards last season in the senior season, 10 touchdowns. Craig Lumpkin never really was able to get untracked because of his injuries. He's gone. Jason Johnson also played a little full fullback and tailback as you take a look at the Georgia schedule. Those three guys gone out of the backfield this year. I'll tell you what, look at weeks three, four, and five. You Carolina in Columbia, then you go to Arizona, you're taking on a quality Arizona State team, you come back and host Alabama. Week off before Tennessee, and then look at back-to-back -back LSU and Florida, both really on the road, not here in Athens in uh, October, November. Tough schedule. Everybody's talking about it. Yeah, it's going to be difficult for Georgia, uh, but we've seen now the two, uh, you know, a two-loss team can win a national championship, can't they? Munson Mayer can't hold on to the pass. Munson Meyer, I should say, can't yeah. hold on to the pass. 
I thought they were going undefeated. I think they were losing twice. I'm just saying that with that difficult schedule, I know in the past you would look at that and say, well, unless you go undefeated, you can't win the national championship. Well, you know, the mold's been broken. You know, we at first it was, you know, a one-loss team can't win. Now, now a two-loss team can win that BCS national championship. We saw it happen this year. Well, they're going to have to play their best from start to finish if uh, they want to talk championship at the end of the year. Very and challenging schedule. Yeah, Mark Rick says they've handled those expectations well. You know, it's kind of like a, a young man who gets – touted as the Heisman favorite before the season started, uh, gets started, that can weigh on you. But he feels like the team has uh, handled that fairly well, unlike the uh, black team who's had a hard time handling this possession as they just burned their second time out. 7-3, Red leading the black here on the Georgia G-Day game. There's no way to hide it. If you drive drunk, we will find you. Cops everywhere are stepping up enforcement and cracking down like never before. Sir, have you been drinking tonight? Sir, have you been drinking this evening? Sir, have you been drinking tonight? Make no mistake, you will get caught and you will be arrested over the limit under arrest. Overhead, ladies and gentlemen, is the squad. The Red Baron squad, and these dog fans are pumped up and ready to go. The official pizza sponsor of the Georgia Bulldogs, Red Baron is available in your grocer's freezer. Try all the Red Baron pizzas, deep dish, French bread, pizza real style, and more. Red Baron, quality pizza for the entire family. Dog fans love Red Baron, the official pizza sponsor of the Georgia Bulldogs. 6-13 to play in the first half. The Red leading the Black 7-3, the 2008 Georgia G-Day game. More spring football coming up for you here on CSS. Next Saturday, we've got three games starting at 1 o'clock Eastern with the Clemson Tigers followed by the Alabama Crimson Tide and the Ole Miss Rebels. You can log on to css-sports.com to find out when your favorite team's spring football game will air here on your source for Southeast sports. I wonder about that Alabama A-Day, I guess they call it. Mm -hmm. Last year, not an empty seat in the stadium over there at Bryant-Denny. I'm really kind of surprised there's a good crowd here today. I thought this had the potential to be one of the most well-attended Georgia G-Day games ever. And, of course, it still turned out to be a very good crowd despite the inclement weather. Yeah, rain didn't scare a lot of these people off. They wanted to come out and see this uh, new young talent that Mark Rick is showing off. So second down and 10 with the ball at the 45-yard line. Toss goes to Caleb King. Slips a couple of tackles, and Caleb King gets down to the 37-yard line. You can already see his elusiveness at work, and he also runs with some pretty good power. Which is some great instinct here. He's not thinking his way through here. He just uh, He's planting and cutting, accelerating up in there, and uh, not, not shying away from contact. He's, he's got everything you're looking for in a running back. Just got to stay healthy going into the season. Caleb King, five carries for 26 yards today. Saw him engage with a tremendous one-on-one -on -one battle with Marcus Ball out of Stevenson High School, who went on and is a linebacker now at Florida State University. Great spin move by Caleb King to pick up the first down at the 34-yard line. The team dent. Getting in that backfield in a hurry. Doesn't scare Caleb King. You mentioned the, uh, the spin move. Made famous by the great Chuck Foreman in that Vikings uniform years ago. Probably showing my age mentioning him, but a great spin move there. And I'll tell you that, the ability to elude defenders is, is not something that comes easy at this level. So first and 10 for the black team is Caleb King putting on a little bit of a show here. And this is what the folks came out to see. Remember, it was a year ago as a flag drops in the offensive backfield. It was a year ago that Noshawn Marino was the guy that everybody wanted to see. Nobody knew about Noshawn other than what they had heard on internet reports or read in the newspaper and this great anticipation about what Noshawn Marino might be able to do. And, of course, he lived up to those expectations, rushing for over 1,300 yards. Yeah, the talk a year ago was all about this offensive line and trying to patch work something together. You know, great expectations going into last season. But the big question mark was – the offensive line and Stacy Searles, the offensive line coach, really did an MVP type of job putting those guys together. And this year they're looking really deep on that offensive line. First and 10 from the 34 yard line. And the ball might have been fumbled. 
And it was, and it's picked up. Heading back the other way, Akeem Hebron. And Hebron gets down to the 26-yard line. Quarterback center exchange problem. Ball really never got up, I don't believe. And it got kicked around there on the line of scrimmage before Hebron got his hands on it. And the ball comes up, goes right back down. Yeah, Hebron just picked it up, started going with it. Yeah. Looking like a running back here. Kind of reminiscent of that Tony Taylor play against Georgia Tech a couple of years ago, except Hebron didn't score right there, but he gets it to the 26 yard line and sets up the uh, red team, first team offense in pretty good field position. Hebron, another one of those young, talented linebackers. They've got a handful of them over there. Logan Gray now in there at quarterback, wearing the green number six, a red shirt freshman out of Columbia, Missouri. And the toss goes to Noshan Marino. He cuts back. <laughs> and Marino gets down inside the 25-yard line before being tackled by Geno Atkins. A lot of talk about Logan Gray, too. Took a red shirt a year ago, kid out of Missouri. And uh, he was a three-year starter in high school, played a ton of football. Really a gifted dual athlete, a guy that can run it and throw it, and really has, has worked hard this spring getting more comfortable in the pocket, throwing the football around. Yeah, and as, as Mark Rick told us, you know, he's got some other gifts that they'll expound upon once his time comes to be the quarterback or really compete for the job. Right now, of course, he's here just a backup, and, and that's the case for everybody behind Matthew Stafford Gray. And interference will be the call on Asher Allen as he was covering Chris uh, Durham. Asher Allen doesn't like that call one bit. He's... He's got great coverage on Durham, and uh, Logan, uh, really a nice thrown ball. He put it in a spot where only the receiver could get to it. Asher is such a competitor. You see Allen's numbers from the 07 season, and yeah, there was a little contact. Yeah, maybe pulled on his arm just a little bit. Asher trying to gain a little leverage, and he's a, a distinct size disadvantage against Chris Durham, who's 6'5", and Asher's 5'10". Well, Asher plays like he's 6'5". He doesn't like it. Look, he's still jawing a little bit. He knows Coach Martinez is going to get on him a little bit about that one. Asher with a couple of interceptions in that Sugar Bowl victory over Hawaii. So first and goal to go for the red team at the nine-yard line. Sean Chappis is the fullback today. Brandon Sutherland out with injury, not participating in the spring game this year. And it's Richard Samuel, the freshman, getting a chance to carry the ball for the first time. Richard Samuel should be a high school senior right now, graduated early out of Cass High School in Cartersville, Georgia. Well, it's got to be tough on these kids to graduate early and then right in the mix uh, in major college football and spring practice. They're getting picked on, hazed a little bit. They're getting hit harder than they've ever been hit before. And it's all about survival for Richard Samuel and these guys this spring. Well, he's got the body to survive as Logan Gray's going to call a timeout. Samuel at 6'2", 215. Uh, there was even some talk, you know, during the recruiting process among the people who evaluate such things that Sam was a guy that maybe could be moved over to play the linebacker position if Georgia got really deep at running back. Well, Georgia got really deep at linebacker. I'm sure he wants to stick at, our, at running back. Again, it just shows the talent of the kid. He, he could play on either side of the ball. So 3.09 to play here in the first half. The red leading the black, 7-3. The red being the first team offense. The black being the first team defense. And the Reds scoring on a touchdown pass in the first quarter from Matthew Stafford to Michael Moore. Let's check in with Allison Williams. Guys, I'm here with wide receiver Mohamed Massaqua. How has the energy been this spring with the team coming off that big Sugar Bowl win? It's been very high. We, we know what the expectations are for next season, and we're just trying to match it with our work ethic. Looking at the wide receivers, you guys lost your leading receiver in Sean Bailey, but you, you returned six lettermen. How's the wide receiving core looking this spring? We're looking good. We're very confident. We're working hard. We're, we're learning from our mistakes, and we're just trying to move forward. All right, great. Thanks so much, Matt. Thank you. All right, thank you, Allison. Not only did the Bulldogs lose Sean Bailey, who we visited with on the last dog report, but Mikey Henderson also graduated out of the program at that position. Two playmakers. And that's Chappis with the catch, but he got knocked down immediately by Rennie Curry. 
Yeah, that wide receiver group, Muhammad Massaqua, really uh, impressive last year. The way he stepped up making big plays, that long touchdown pass against Florida was so huge in the, the grand scheme of things. They need more of that from Muhammad. Mo, they call him. And Rennie Curran had a spectacular freshman season out of Brookwood High School in Snellville, Georgia. Really burst onto the scene with great speed. Plays at such a high rate of speed. And so physical, you're not going to see many guys break tackles by Rennie Curran. He's going to get you on the ground, and uh, he can run you down. Logan Gray going to run it on a quarterback draw, but the play was blown dead. It's a great thing about LRB and Curran is uh, you're seeing so much of the spread offense now where you're playing the majority of your defense is a nickel package, and those guys can, can play against that scheme on first down, second down, and third down. Tough against the run, tough against the pass. Seems like there were three guys on the defensive side of the ball that every time you read a story, and then when we talked to Mark Rick leading up to the G-Day, that he talked about a lot, and that was Donnell Ellerby, Rennie Curran, and Asher Allen. And with Curran, he says, here's a guy that you don't have to babysit. You know, you don't have to motivate this guy. And he's going to have a big career at the University of Georgia. He's well on his way already. Look at that body on that guy. <laughs> wow. 220. Sound like, like a, Tommy Bout. Built like a... He's a granite touchdown pass to Michael Moore. Second touchdown reception for Michael Moore, who's bidding to become a big time member in that wide receiver rotation this year. Well, he's off to a good start here in the G-Day game. Really a great throw by Logan there. He, he steps up there, a little play action. He knows where he wants to go and just sticks it. And there again, between Evans and the, uh, the free safety, you've got to put some velocity on that football. Logan uh, looking very comfortable back there in the pocket. He's really come on strong. Logan Gray. This PAT by Brian Bear is good. And with 2.04 to play here in the first half, the Red leading the Black 14 to 3. It's a play action pass, so the quarterback now has got to pick up the coverage, and he, uh, he finds that free safety and knows he can stick it. Beautiful throw in there to Moore. So Michael Moore, the junior out of North Broward Prep in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, has a chance to really be a big member of the uh, wide receiver rotation. Kenneth Harris is another guy. We're not going to see him today because of his injury, but Kenneth Harris is a guy that only four receptions last year really took a step backwards. He and Durham are big physical guys. You're going to see them a lot on first down when they want to run the football, asking those guys to get out there and block. Joe Cox dumps it off to Munzenmeyer. He got knocked out of bounds. Pick up about five or six for Munson Meyer, who unfortunately for him will start the season on a two-game suspension. He won't play in the first two games. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Got to do right, Matt. You got to pay the price if you don't. Hey, the theme of this team on both sides of the ball, you want playing time? You better make some plays, baby, because we got other guys that can get out there and get it done. You got to be playmakers. Second down and three. Pass is thrown. It is complete to Israel Troop at the 38-yard line and a first down, second reception for Troop in this ball game. Joe Cox right on the money with that deep out route. This team really believes in Joe Cox. If anything happened to Stafford, they really believe Joe Cox can come in and get the job done. See a reason why there. He can, uh, he can throw it. He knows what to do. He knows how to operate the offense. This team really believes in him. Mark Rick says he's a gym rat kind of guy, a great attitude. Yeah, Got he comes hit. out competing every day, even though he knows Stafford's the man. That's Walter Hill in motion behind the line, and they're going to throw towards Hill, but he wasn't ready for it. Looked up late, incomplete. Hill, an interesting story, redshirt freshman out of East Hall High School in Gainesville, Georgia, originally a basketball commitment. Has that size. Georgia's got a lot of size. You kind of mentioned it. Georgia's got a lot of big guys at wide receiver. Hill's a 6'4 guy. Yeah, Aaron White Durham was out there. They moved him to the tight end position. He's just got to bulk up in order to be a tight end. Troop is a physical player. Cox at 59 yards on 5 of 8 passing so far in this ballgame. Cox is going to play a lot today. Handoff goes to Calvin Daniels. Didn't get very far that time. That was John Knox, the redshirt freshman out of Statesboro, Georgia High School, in on that tackle. 
Everybody looking to impress the coaches here today because they're going to look at this videotape and study it hard and find out what these guys can do when they bring them down to the stadium. Uh, another indication of whether you're ready to help them win come fall. Yeah, Bulldogs got a couple of redshirt freshmen out of Statesboro, Georgia High School that are uh, eventually going to have some pretty significant playing time in this program. John Knox at safety and Justin Houston at defensive end. Third and long passing situation. Cox back to pass, throws to Calvin Daniels. He got leveled, and that's John Knox that I was just talking about. <laughs> He's getting all excited there, and Joe needs to stick that thing downfield here. He's dumping it off on a, a, a third down and nine situation. That's simply not going to pick it up. Four tackles already for John Knox in this ball game. I think that's the leading tackler on either side of the ball. He's bringing it, man. Redshirt freshman, so he's already got a year in the program, although this is his first spring football game. From the borough. Don't miss the dog report on CSS. It's coming up after today's game, our visit with Georgia tennis coach Manuel Diaz as they're gunning for a second consecutive national championship and Bulldogs graduated wide receiver Sean Bailey who's hoping to follow in the footsteps of his father Stacy and play in the NFL. The dog report coming up immediately following the conclusion of this ball game or at 4 o'clock Eastern right here on CSS. Well, I can remember thinking how in the world do you replace Dan McGill as the tennis coach and Manny Diaz has done exactly that. Well, you know, Dan McGill won two national championships and for the longest time Manuel Diaz was there on those two national championships last year's undefeated team gave him his third and broke that tie with Dan McGill who of course was his coach when he was an All-American here at the University of Georgia back in the 70s. Hoping Sean Bailey gets a shot in the NFL with somebody. That was Drew Butler on the punt. Didn't got a didn't get a lot of trajectory on that. And that ball's going to be down at the 25 uh, yard line. Talking about Noshawn Marino's freshman season. And that's freshman all time. And he's number four. That's all time, not at the University of Georgia, all time in college football. The number four season, of course, number two in SEC history, I should say. Yeah, Jamal Lewis, Tennessee, Atlanta. Not sure who E. Lewis is. So first and ten. Yeah. Pass is thrown underneath. And that might be Kenneth Harris. He's not supposed to be playing, but he wears number 88. And it is Kenneth Harris. So Kenneth Harris getting in the ball game, even though we were told that he was injured and would not play today. E. Lewis was Emmett Smith, by the way, if you're wondering. And Kenneth Harris said, look, I'm playing today. He snuck <laughs> on out there. <laughs> look, they got him off the field already. You're not supposed to go in there, Kenneth. I wanted to play, coach. It's game day. Yeah, there he is over on the sideline like, wait a second. Wait a what? Don't you know that you're not supposed to be playing? <laughs> it's kind of like the, 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 the Greg Oden story when he just couldn't help himself, went to a 24-hour gym so he could, you know, play basketball at 2 a.m. so no one would know. Well, it's hard to compete when you're on the sideline. A lot of competition at each position here on this Georgia team. Second down and eight. Stafford back in there, quarterback, running and throwing and in and out of the hands of Chris Durham. Well, really good decision. They wanted to, you know, your first uh, first uh, spot is that out route you want to get to, but that was well covered, so it came back inside. Secondary receiver just didn't uh, throw it accurately enough. But, again, on the corner, good decision, and that ball's got to be caught. Chris Durham will be kicking himself about that later. Durham with 19 catches on his career for 251 yards. Made three starts in his career like the fact they're getting Stafford out of the pocket a little more. You've seen the bootleg, uh, the, the zone read where he has a chance to run the football, and the, the sprint out there. Mike Bobo doing a nice job of moving him around. Stafford under a heavy rush. They throw the screen pass. No Sean Marino makes Asher Allen miss. Another guy. And he gets up to the 36-yard line, and no Sean Marino picks up the first down. Third and nine, you come with a screen pass, and uh, you just want to get the ball in Noshawn Moreno's hands and let him go to work here, and that's exactly what he did. Screen pass set up really nice, uh, one-handed grab, and he does the rest, no problem. Picks up the first down. Back to live action, and the pass is caught over on the far sideline by Michael Moore. 
out route. Stafford showing off that arm strength right there. Brian Evans had really good coverage on the receiver, and you see, again, a little sprint out, wide side of the field, and just sticks it right on the money. The arm strength is so impressive. If you ever get a chance to get down the sideline and watch number seven throw the ball. Ball thrown, incomplete for Michael Moore this time. 14 seconds left in the half. Matt a little upset with himself. We're in the two-minute drill here. You know, the quarterbacks get all excited when they get in these two-minute drills. They get to call some plays. And I'm going to take this team down and score. Matthew Stafford raised his completion percentage up to 55.7% last year, up from 52% his freshman year. His goal is to get it up to around 62%. Yeah, 65. I'm going to encourage him to up it to 65. I think he can get there. He turned the, the touchdown interception ratio, flipped it completely in a sophomore year, and he's going to continue to improve that. Guns it in the middle. It is complete at the 35-yard line. Aaron White, I believe. Aaron White, the redshirt freshman out of Columbia, Missouri, who was a teammate of Logan Gray. Seven seconds as the clock has stopped to move the chain. Not many quarterbacks uh, at the college level are going to make the throw that Stafford just made. And Stafford spikes the ball with five seconds left, and he'll trot over to talk things over with Mike Bobo. This will be too far for a field goal attempt, but I'm guessing, so they're going to do a Hail Mary. I mean, watch the, the velocity on this football. Mm. A tight spiral. That thing gets 25 yards downfield in a split second here. And look at the fundamentals. Stepping toward the target, something he and Mike Bobo have worked very hard at this spring. And he had some steam coming off that when you see his stats from a year ago. That 194 for 348 is just under 56%, and the 21 touchdowns to 10 interceptions is... Buck pointed out, flipped that touchdown to interception ratio. Looked like a Smoltz fastball there. Final play of the half more than likely. They throw it high for Michael Moore. Well, we'll have time for one more play as the clock stops two seconds. Kind of interesting there. It looks like they were trying to just get a little bit closer for a field goal attempt. And yeah, that, that out route should have given them that opportunity, but ball thrown a little high. So instead, Brian Bear is going to attempt a 52-yard field goal. Georgia very concerned about their kicking situation after losing the graduated Brandon Cattu. Of course, they have Blair Walsh coming in out of Cardinal Newman in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. He'll be here in August to, they'll have a wide open competition in August for yeah. the kicking job as Bear has plenty of leg, it looks like, and it is good. A 52-yard field goal by Brian Bear, and at the half, the red leading the black here on CSS. Calhoun's before or after an exciting basketball game at the Thompson Bowling Arena. For great eating and fun with friends, nothing's better than the taste of Tennessee at Calhoun's. In Knoxville, Nashville, at the Marina in Lenore City, Pigeon Forge, and Gatlinburg. Lincoln Associates showed me it's not just about the money it's how the money can help it helped our family pay the bills after the accident it paid for my husband's doctors and physical therapy so he could get better and go back to work it made it easier to take care of my father because he couldn't do it alone since 1984 Mont Lincoln Associates has helped thousands of injured people call 1-800-LAW-NEED after an accident it's not just about the money it's how the money can help halftime where the red lead the black by a score of 17 to 3 let's go down to allison williams she's standing by with a couple of the honorary coaches for today's game 
That's right, one of those coaches, former Georgia quarterback DJ Shockley. DJ, there's a lot of excitement surrounding the team this year. What's it going to take for the Bulldogs to fulfill these expectations this fall? They just got to be consistent and stay within themselves. You know, a lot of people are going to put them so high. You know, they got to not look at all the publications and everybody saying how good they are and just, just go out and play each game, one game at a time, and not really worry about, you know, all the hype. So they just got to go out and play hard each and every game and take it one game at a time. Looking at Matthew Stafford, what type of qualities does he possess as a quarterback to lead this team all the way? Well, obviously the first is his leadership skills. Guys seem to kind of respond to him. And he, he has that kind of aura about him that kind of, you know, makes him respond to him. So he's a guy that has all the qualities to be a great quarterback, and he's doing it now. And, you know, as long as he got the guys around him leading him, and, you know, they, they're with him, and he's going to be all right. Your red team's looking pretty good so far in the first half. Oh, yeah. I try to tell my boy Blue that, you know, and my man Kevin Buller is going gonna to be over with. 17-3 to three <laughs> now at halftime. We're just going to run it all day now. Kevin, what do you think about that? How are you going to get this white team back in it? Well, I think they're going to have to start trying to make some plays right now. The, the red team has certainly made the plays, made the catches, and you know, Matthew and our offense right now are, are living up to the hype right now early in the spring. You're, of course, not the only butler on the sidelines there. Your son is a redshirt freshman kicker. Drew, how is it being on the sidelines with your son? Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's great for me as a father. I don't know if I uh, put a little uh, nervousness in him. Uh, he might try a little too hard, but uh, he's working at it hard. And his uh, red shirt freshman year, he, he learned a lot, and uh, he's in that competition right now. That's all you can ask. As a college Hall of Fame kicker yourself, the kicking unit this year maybe not as strong as in previous years or as the Bulldogs would like it to be. What does this unit have to do to really compete and help this team out? Well, we got to have somebody step up. We've got some great kicking going on here today. I think it's something that if you have to try to replace a Brandon Katu uh, and a Ely, um, you know, we're going to have to get guys to – Keep going, and uh, Brian did a great job last year punting, and I think good competition will make this team better. They're going to uh, be in positions where the kicking game is going to play a big part in the game, and they're going to have to be ready because you just don't want to let your team down by not having a solid kicking game. Great. Thanks so much, Kevin and DJ. It was great talking with both you guys. Matt. All right. Thank you, Allison. When we get back, we're going to be joined by Georgia Bulldogs head coach Mark Rick. Halftime here at the Georgia T-Day game with the Red leading the Black 17-3. What does it take to become the hitter you've always dreamed of being? It takes skills. The number one batting trainer in baseball, the Skills Hitaway, is now better than ever. The Hitaway Solo Trainer's unique wrap and return action lets you get high repetition batting practice and always on your own schedule. Becoming a great hitter takes solid mechanics, fast hands, and great timing. Get the Skills Hitaway and you'll develop them all. The durable hitaway can be used indoors or out and attaches easily to a tree or pole or the mobile hitaway system. The hitaway can be used for righties, lefties, and aspiring switch hitters. Take your hitting to a new level. Order the Skills Hitaway Baseball or Hitaway Softball now for just $29.99. Plus, call now and we'll include the Skills Variable Bat Weight with removable weights free. To become the best, you need desire, hard work, and the right tools. Order the Skills Hitaway Baseball or Softball now. Have you tried VHIX? VHIX.com is your local online solution for buying, selling, and researching new and used cars. Compare cars from local dealers and independent sellers side by side so you can make the right choice. Get reviews, specs, and vehicle histories. Have you tried VHIX? VHIX.com can calculate monthly payments and help you find the right lender and insurer. Know how safe your next car is with accident ratings and vehicle recall information. Have you tried VHIX? VHIX.com makes finding your next car easy. Shop smarter. VHIX.com. Well, you came from a seed that grew in Mommy's tummy. A seed? You're like a tree? Kind of. Yeah. How does it get into Mommy's tummy? Well... When two people love each other, um, a lot. The Georgia G-Day game with the red leading in the black, 17-3. Matt Stewart and Buck Blue now joined by Georgia Bulldogs head coach Mark Rick. And Mark, your thoughts on the uh, first half. It's been a pretty bad weather day, but a, right. I think a pretty good crowd, all things considered. Oh, it's a great crowd, and uh, just the weather being what it is is a blessing. I thought it was going to be thunder showers, and we might even have to cancel the darn thing. But... Uh, you know, I think it's been a pretty cleanly played game. I, uh, I'm, I'm excited about what I've seen. I'm, I'm up here feeling like a blessed <laughs> man right now. 
Let's take a look at some of the first half highlights. Started with Matthew Stafford, a laser here to uh, Michael, Michael Moore, Moore over yeah. his shoulder. Beautiful catch. Matter of fact, that was, I believe that was the same touchdown that uh, was thrown later. Caleb Keem running the ball extremely well. Akeem Hebron, you know, snatching that ball and, yeah. and taking off. Joe Cox tried to body slam him at the end. Yeah, here's Logan Gray with a beautiful throw. And uh, it's just a fantastic job of him. We, that's, that play is like a little bit of a double post. And the first guy broke and the safety jumped. He saw that. And then he threw it to the second post and, and hit it right on the money. It was a great throw. Stafford and uh, No Shine. Everybody wants to talk about right. them. Their day's probably done. But they've I had a nice spring, so. haven't they? They've had a great spring. And, uh, you know, Matthew has really taken it. Uh, he's been very serious about getting better in every phase of the game and, and also taking the reins. You know, he is the guy. I mean, I, I, I'm like, don't wait till you're a senior. I said, you're a senior this year and you're a senior next year. You know, <laughs> so uh, don't be afraid to lead because these guys want you to. Well, we're joined by Georgia Bulldogs head coach Mark Rick. It's halftime here. When we come back, we'll get ready for the start of the third quarter. Coach is going to be with us for the entire third quarter as the Red leads the Black 17 to 3 here on CSX. Twenty-one sports teams, five hundred seventeen student athletes, forty-seven academic All-Americas, one hundred twenty-five Southeastern Conference titles, thirty-two national championships. One reason you and the Georgia Bulldog Club. <laughs> Red leading the black 17 to three, Matt Stewart Buckaloo, Allison Williams and coach Mark Rick with us uh, here in the third quarter. And uh, that's one of the great things about G-Day. I mean, we're scrambling, we're trying to get a shot of Nosha Marino who was wearing number 26 that's in the right. first half, but now he's not wearing number 26. Yeah, I think that's Norton right there. We, Christian uh, Norton. Yeah, uh, coach's son, Wayne Norton's son. So, uh, we need you up here all the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, you know, I, I actually know most of the guys. There's no Sean right there. He is still wearing 26. Yeah. Just got d duplicate 26. That's right. There's that other 26. So. Yeah, that, I don't even know uh, why 24 wasn't available. It probably got auctioned off somewhere. Yeah, we, uh, were, jo we were joking about that. We were joking yeah. that Lauren Smith had auctioned it off for the Bulldogs. Yeah, I don't doubt it. I don't <laughs> doubt it. You know, Lauren's, Lauren will always say, you know, whatever's good for Georgia. <laughs> and he's not afraid to ask a favor. But we were told we were told that he was wearing 26 today because of Tony Wilson. That's, okay, that's to honor we, Tony. Yeah, that's, that's what we were told. I'll tell you what, Tony really had a great spring up until that injury. He's just uh, blossoming into a great player. He dropped some weight that he gained his redshirt freshman year. I think we was, have. Uh, was very quick. I think we have walk-on Nick Franks in there at quarterback to start the second half for the black team. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. And We've got all kind of 26s <laughs> in there. <laughs> How many 26s can you have on one roster? That carry was by Dontavius Jackson, the true freshman out of Heard County High School. I think that's his first carry. Yeah, Dontavius is a is a special back. He's uh, and I guess that's him. He's worn a different jersey than he was in in his practice jersey. I'm having a hard time <laughs> myself. Oh, there he is. Okay, I he's got it. He's there. A slight guy. He's 5'10", 190. You know what though? He he's he is he is pretty strong and he's a very talented back and he's made some big runs in the spring. Gets might, another might, carry. Might see one right here. Oh. Got out of a couple tackles yeah, he and gets up to the 30 yard line. Gained about uh, four or five yards on the play. And that was just about all him. So uh, very good run. Certainly not easy on these guys that graduate early and come right into spring practice. Uh, they're, they're just trying to survive out there, I would imagine. You know what? That's what you would think. But um, these guys in particular have really seemed to fit in well and learn quickly and and have made enough plays early in spring where they got their confidence up and their their teammates, you know, were excited about uh, what they were seeing. So I think it's been a blessing. I mean, uh, Ben Jones has played well at center. Uh, and uh, it, you know, it's been good. Tavares King made some big plays before he had got that infection in his knee. Hand off to the fullback. I think that was Josh Bagby getting the carry that time. Big Josh going to hammer it in there on third and five. <laughs> 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 you never know, right? Exactly. You never know. <laughs> Probably not much of a chance that's going to gain five yards, though, right? You he's never know. He's but, out of uh, What the heck? Give it a give it a war. You got you get If that's on your game plan, you got to call that son of a gun at least once. And it's fourth down, and Drew Butler's going to come out here and punt. Of course, Georgia's got a 
Very stiff competition at place kicker, but not at punter. Brian Mims coming back, a very solid senior, and he's the starter. But uh, Drew right. also in that place kicking competition. Yeah, and, and you know, Drew is uh, the heir apparent at punter after Mims is gone, you know, so he's got to continue, uh, you know, to work hard and, and make sure when his day comes, he's ready. High snap, as you saw. Unfortunately, that was not a very good kick either, but uh, fortunately, no rush on the play. Right. Well, we're going to. They're supposed to just uh, exchange 35 yards in every kick, no matter what. But uh, yeah, that's not real thrilling right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure Coach Fab was really <laughs> thrilled with that. I tell you what, this uh, young tandem at tackle that uh, you have on the uh, first team offensive line, uh, Sturdivant played so well last year, and Keontae Tripp has really come on strong. Yeah, Keontae, we're so excited about him. You know, he, we moved him at the beginning of two days last year and he's you know he trained to be a dn he's like 262 and uh, now he's like 295 pounds and just is a tremendous athlete in great shape he's going to be special i really believe that logan gray in there at quarterback and his former high school teammate uh, aaron white is lined up at tight end handoff goes to richard samuel another one of those true freshmen i think samuel if i'm not mistaken uh he's 16, 17 years old, 17 years he old. He just turned 17. 17 yeah. and, uh, very young guy. He, he almost showed up as a 16-year-old. He's very, very mature for his age, and he's very um, intelligent. He works extremely hard. You know what? He showed up at 205 pounds in January. Today, you know what he weighs? 220. Wow. I said, what? Ha you know, I'm like, <laughs> what? I said, I said, how much do you weigh? He said, 220. I said, is that the most you've ever weighed? He said, yeah. And I said, well, what would you weigh when you got here? He said, 205. I was like, my gosh. Plays Coach, physical, too. He, he does now. He runs a little upright, but he he does uh, have the power to burst through people. And, and he's done that a few times in this uh, in this camp or in this spring. So now it's first down and 20 following the penalty. Samuel gets oh, the nice carry play. that time. And he got pulled down from behind by Jarius Wynn. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Jarius has really played extremely well this spring. And, it's not easy to, you know, bring down a back like that with just one hand. But uh, it was almost that horse collar rule. It was, it? yeah. Drag I got dragged down from behind. But I will say this. The, the, the rule is if it's in the box, then it's not considered the, the horse collar tackle. It's, it's when you're out in the open field and a guy grabs him and yanks him down. With the horse collar, do you have to grab the pads? Because he grabbed the back of he, the jersey. He did grab the jersey. You do have to grab the pads. Yeah, that was a jersey tackle. Right. So second down. Step up. Gray back to pass, right. running now. He can go. Yep, he can as he gets it across the 45-yard line and finally tagged by Brad Arsenault, who came over. A first down for Logan Gray. Looks like a young Charlie Ward running around out there. You know what? I, I think that's uh, not a bad comparison. I think his uh, arm strength is very much like Charlie's, and his athleticism is very much like Charlie, and, and, his, and his build, really, is very much like Charlie. So uh, that's an exciting thing to think about. Heisman Trophy winner out of Thomas. Well, let's not put too much pressure on the young guy, <laughs> but that's right. I'll tell you, when you, when you talk about Charlie Ward, uh, you can't help but think about D.J. Shockley, too, because they're so close to the same kind of person, same kind of leader. Just uh, love those guys, and uh, it's great to have uh, Shockley out there, Blue out there, Butler out there, uh, and, uh, and, and Ross out there, you know, as these honorary coaches so I'm, I'm excited to get those guys coming back that was uh, Jamie Lewis on the carry and Chad Glower making the tackle I tell you Chad's had a great spring this kid you know he's out there playing corner and everybody wants to pick on the new guy you know and, uh, <laughs> but they have uh, found out that he'll he'll pick six and and he'll uh, play physical on the jam and and he's an outstanding tackler he, he's really uh, been one of the big surprises of the spring play Here comes on a blitz backside yeah. Played for Mike Earwood at uh, Stars Mill High School in Fayetteville, Georgia. Yeah, he has done it. He's done a super job. And he's earned the respect of uh, the players and the coaches, and I'm sure he's going to be a force on our special teams this year. Coach, talk about your competition there on the inside of the offensive line. Uh, at guard, you're missing bowling, and, and some talk about the center position. Right, right now Chris Davis is, you know, starting as, as the number one center, and then Ben Jones has quickly moved into the number two spot, true freshman out of Alabama. And uh, right now, from what I've seen, both of them are very capable centers. Uh, I guess it's just going to depend on how, long, how far along Ben comes if we decide to start him and let Chris maybe move into the uh, guard position. But uh, both those guys are going to end up playing for sure. 
Logan Gray just did Gray right there, but the having that flexibility play. with guys that can play multiple positions kind of gives you the option of putting the best five guys out there rather than having to play them by position, That's doesn't right. it? And until you have 10 guys where, you know, one backs up another one, you know, you, you're going to have a situation where you're going to have to cross train people. And, uh, you know, Chris is one that can do it. Uh, right now, Ben's just got to learn that center position, but he, he's got all the intangibles and, and uh, he's very, very physical. So I think he'll do just great. Vance and Anderson, two big boys at guard. Right. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, big bean, he can do it. And Vance can too. They just got to get to where they're consistent, just like we said before. All right. 233 to play in the third quarter with the red leading the black 17 to three. We'll continue with G Day after this timeout on CSS. What does it take to become the hitter you've always dreamed of being? It takes skills. The number one batting trainer in baseball, the Skills Hitaway, is now better than ever. The Hitaway Solo Trainer's unique wrap and return action lets you get high repetition batting practice and always on your own schedule. Becoming a great hitter takes solid mechanics, fast hands, and great timing. Get the Skills Hitaway and you'll develop them all. The durable hitaway can be used indoors or out and attaches easily to a tree or pole or the mobile hitaway system. The hitaway can be used for righties, lefties, and aspiring switch hitters. Take your hitting to a new level. Order the Skills Hitaway Baseball or Hitaway Softball now for just $29.99. Plus, call now and we'll include the Skills Variable Bat Weight with removable weights free. To become the best, you need desire, hard work, and the right tools. Order the Skills Hitaway Baseball or Softball now. This is a special birthday for Jimmy because... Your small business team. The finesse player. The enforcer. The miracle worker. Don't these Hope Weavers deserve the best tools in the business? Comcast Business Class offers digital voice, high-speed internet, and TV. The same tools as the big guys for your guys. Power to the business people. Comcast Business Class. Turn your office on. Call now to get Comcast Business Class voice, internet, and TV for $99 a month. Hello, I'm Bill Karn. And I'm Nick Karn. Since 1996, thanks to our customers, Karn Auto Sales has been providing quality vehicles to the CSRA. Right now, we have a lot full of very affordable cars, trucks, and SUVs, and we have the best financing around. You'll be glad you came to Karn Auto Sales no matter what your situation. We're on Peach Orchard Road, just south of Bobby Jones. You can also get pre-approved at carnautosales.com. Remember, we work hard for everybody. Quarter, Red leading the Black 17-3. Matt Stewart, Buck Ballou, Allison Williams, and Coach Mark Rick as the Black team goes back on offense. Yeah, Black team needs to get something rolling here. They're going to make a game of it. Jonathan DeLorial in there at quarterback now. Yeah, Jonathan is uh, very intelligent young man who understands what's going on and and uh, gosh he's at least his second year in the system if not the third let's take a look at Matthew Stafford and you talked to us this week about the fundamentals that Matthew works on and has been working on the spring right well of course he's on the move right now which is you know he's just got God given ability to move and and sling that ball about 60 70 yards <laughs> or whatever it is but you hope that he's got his weight on his back foot and then as he drives forward he he turns his waist and his torso, and then everything follows, and and he's just got uh, he's got it. That's for sure. And not many guys can throw like that, young man. Yeah, I think you said when you were talking with us, you want to get him to be a fundamental machine because you know he's going to do. You know, there are going to be times during the game when things break down, and he just has to do things on his own ability. But you want right. him to get all the other stuff ironed out. Right. Well, you know, if there if there's great protection and an open receiver then I want you right where you're supposed to be in the pocket I want you to be on balance and I want you throwing strikes you know and then there's times there's times when uh, you know you have to move and you have to scramble uh, but uh, I'll tell you Matt's a special player and, and he's becoming a special leader for us too and of course there's some wonderful moments from last year uh, including this long long touchdown there against Auburn on the blackout day to Muhammad but uh, like how you guys and uh, Coach Bobo moving him around a little bit, not afraid to bootleg or sprint or roll out, getting him out on the corner, and he does a nice job on the run. He is a very good athlete. He's a deceptive uh, athlete. Uh, you know, we do our mat drills, and, and he's in there moving as quick as anybody at 235 pounds. So, you know, we, we, can, we can run legitimate quarterback run with this guy, and we just don't want to expose him to too much. 
uh, punishment because if you are the, you know if you're if you got the ball in your hand you're gonna get hit. That's a quarterback sack right here for Joe Travis out of Fannin, Georgia. How about that? Good job, Joe. Yeah, we got to cut that ball loose. We don't need those sacks. You know, when you're standing nine yards behind the line of scrimmage, if you just throw it away, you gain nine <laughs> yards back. You know, exactly. they don't understand that sometimes. But uh, anyway, it's better than throwing to the, to the other team. I can promise you that. Trent Dentmer out of Cartersville, Georgia. Keep Getting off that of long, that low, long line drive kick. Gets a lot of yards, but yeah. how many yards do you get back on a return like that? Yeah, but, I mean, that's he, exactly right. He just wants to. He get, but he got a nice boom and kick. But that's out why of. we made the rule: yeah. 35 yards, no matter what. <laughs> exactly. Because Mims could probably line drive it for 70. Yeah. Then everybody'd be starting from the 10-yard line every time. <laughs> but that it was a nice job, nice punt, nice spiral. And uh, I wasn't even sure who snapped that one, but it was on the money. JB Batson, another walk-on, going to take over the uh, red team offense right here, at quarterback. All right, let's see what happens. JB out of Charlotte, North Carolina, and Providence Day School. Yeah, I, I know uh, he's got to be excited to have this opportunity, and Coach Bo has done a good job of giving everybody an opportunity to play. That's Samuel on the carry. It's been a good spring for you. It's been a very good spring. I mean, really, the only day I was disappointed in was Wednesday, and that thing was, uh, it was one of those days where it didn't look like anybody wanted to be out there, and usually that happens about day four or five, you know, but. Uh, <laughs> We kept a great amount of intensity throughout the spring, and that one was a little rough. But other than that, I've been very pleased. And I was very sad when uh, Marcus Washington got hurt uh, and won't be able to play. But at least he'll have another senior year, you know, after this year. So we're, we're excited that he'll be back in 2009. Well, Coach, that's the end of the third quarter. Thanks a lot. I for being enjoyed with it. Us. Always a pleasure. Thanks for letting me be here. You're undefeated Keep again. Up. Every time you join us, you never lose a game when you're right up here with that's us. That's awesome. I'll see you. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. All right. That's the Georgia G-Day game. We're coming back for the start of the fourth quarter right after this timeout. This is Sarah Watkins. How much are you paying for AT&T phone service? Think about it. Now you can get phone and internet from Comcast for one low price, $49.90 a month, every month. Introducing the new, everyday, double play from Comcast. Get phone and internet together for just $49.90 per month, every month. Two great services for less than you might be paying for AT&T phone service. An offer this good doesn't come along every day. Until now, call 1-800-COMCAST and save big. Do you know the value of what's in your jewelry box? Is it trash? Is it treasure or somewhere in between? In an economy like this one where every dollar counts, you deserve to have the highest prices paid for your old gold, platinum, diamonds, and unwanted jewelry. Don't sell your jewelry for just any offer. Come see me, Joel Conti, at the Estate Jewelry Center, and I'll tell you what your jewelry is really worth and how you'll sell it for the highest prices. Order the red leading the black 17 to 3. You're watching the 2008 Georgia G Day game. This will wrap up spring football practice. Just visited with head coach Mark Rick. Matthew Stafford, he's done for the day. See DJ Shockley, one of the honorary coaches down there, standing by Stafford. Nothing doing on that carry right there. That was Jarius Wynn with another big tackle. Yeah, I think today is a day where most fans can watch and Really, it comes very clear how Mark Richt and his coaching staff, uh, what's the secret to success here at Georgia? And it's very simple. You recruit and then you develop. Mm -hmm. Recruit great talent. They, they've been able to do that. Top 10 rated recruiting classes every year since Richt has been here. And they're averaging two, three players making an impact into the NFL each and every season. So a great job recruiting and a great job developing the talent once they get here. So third and 14 now. And Batson trying to connect. Let's see, looking for, I'm trying to figure out who number 17 is. Well, he should have made Vernon the, the grab. Spellman. Okay, yeah. Vernon, Vernon Spellman was the guy. And of course, on our roster, he's not number 17. Well, but. beautifully uh, thrown ball right there. And you see the cornerback, Coach Rick, was just bragging on there. Number eight, that's a good number. He goes up and makes a nice play to break that ball up. Brian Mims kicking. Nice high kick. That will be fielded at the 17 yard line. And that was Prince Miller, or at least Prince Miller's number. 
College baseball continues here on CSS. Clemson Tigers, Miami Hurricanes. Alonzo Yonder hit a walk-off homer for the Miami Hurricanes to win it last night, beating the Clemson Tigers in the series opener. You can catch game two of that series tonight at 7 o'clock Eastern and the series finale tomorrow at 1 Eastern right here on CSS. Of course, you can log on to our website, css-sports.com, to find out when your favorite team will be playing next on your source for Southeast sports. Yeah, it tickles me how you get these national guys now looking in at the Georgia program and they're saying, well, how in the world are they going to replace Brown and Howard and Adams and Velasco? Well, you got these young guys that got redshirted. You've been coaching up and you're mm -hmm. plugging them in. Joe Cox in there at quarterback, throws behind Caleb King at the 20-yard line. I think the one of the things... If, if I could put my finger on one thing that Mark Rick has done with the Georgia program since he got here is it's very, in my mind, very comparable to the program that he came from in the 90s where you had Florida State where year after year they simply reloaded. There was no rebuilding. They were just reloading. And I think Mark Rick has done that with the Georgia program, very similar to FSU in the 90s. Yeah, no question about it. Just wave after wave of talent. And they're wearing you down with the uh, rotating the defensive line in, for example, and really was big for him a year ago. And it's going to be big for him this year, too. Just fresh legs coming off the bench. Well, let's watch Caleb King on the screen pass. Was just about to break it when he got tripped up at the 28-yard line. I thought he had a chance to take that one. And had he gotten past that one defender, he might have gone all the way. Yeah, and you know he wants to come out and look good today because everybody's looking in, wondering about Caleb King, their first real opportunity to watch him uh, play the game. And you see the all-around talents, man. He's looked good running the ball, looked good catching the ball. That was Vance Cuff who made the perhaps touchdown saving tackle because watch, if Vance Cuff doesn't get him, who's getting him? Good for Moultrie. <laughs> Yeah, making I, a play there. He's gone if yeah, Cup didn't yeah. reach down and grab his shoestrings. Yeah, I don't think that linebacker trailing on the play was going to run him down. Nice job by Joe Cox. You want to lure that defensive line in on the screen pass and then just dump it off. Cox looking for the dump off. Instead, Justin Houston, another one of those Statesboro kids, gets the quarterback sack. He is a good-looking young player and uh, almost had a sack a moment ago on one of those screen passes. Got inside the, the, the offensive tackle and whipped him, and, and this kid is just full of talent. Statesboro High School, the Blue Devils, one of the fine quad A programs in the state. They're always in the hunt for the national championship. Asher Allen standing deep for this punt. Allen will field it at the 42. Drew Butler with a fine kick that time, and we'll take a timeout with 5.28 to play, and the Red leading the Black 17-3. Hey, Bulldog fans, check out our new look on georgiadogs.com. You'll find everything you need to be the ultimate dog fan. Get t-shirts, jerseys, and more in the online store. Follow the dogs with up-to-the-minute stats and scores through Game Watcher. Sign up for G Extra to get live audio and video, highlights, coaches' shows, in-depth interviews, and more. Now purchase your favorite Bulldog photos or make your bid at one-of-a-kind Bulldog auction. So check it out, the official athletic site of the Georgia Bulldogs, georgiadogs.com. You know, I love life. Every minute is... Hmm. She's coming right back. Yeah, right. Sorry, Mr. Jenkins. I had to send your business loan to someone in the district office, and then someone in the corporate office, and then okay. someone in the... Re We're ready for signatures. That's great. It's fantastic. <laughs> right. I'm just going to need my husband back. <laughs> I had had a stroke. Stroke paralyzed my body, paralyzed my left arm. When I got to walking, I couldn't walk at all. I could not move my leg. I couldn't use my left arm. I would not be walking today if it were not for walking. Cheryl Howard got me ready to walk. And we became very close. Lee taught me how to walk again. Thank you, Walter. <laughs> Let's check in with Allison Williams. Matt, I'm joined by fullback Brandon Sutherland, who's unable to play because you had foot surgery in January. How's the recovery process going for you? Uh, it's been slow, but it's coming along real well. Um, everything's going pretty much the schedule. It's just got to be patient with it. 
Looking at this 2008 team, how do you guys try and carry the momentum of the 07 season without getting too wrapped up in last year's success? Um, you know, we got to look at last year and just take the things that we learned from that season, use the momentum that we gained towards the end of the season, and we're going to try to pour it straight through camp. We use it through spring, continue to have it going so we can when this season starts, we're going to just, you know, keep it going. You guys really hit your stride mid-season last year. What's the most important thing to do to come out strong from the very beginning? Uh, I think we've got to remember to get up for every game. Every game, no matter who you're playing, is a big game. Um, we got to we got to prepare every game like it's our last one, like it's a bowl game. And we're going to, you know, take everyone seriously. Great. Thanks, Brandon. Matt? I thank you, Allison. And uh, not ashamed to say that Brandon Sullivan's one of my favorites. He's a great kid, fine young man. And... I tell you what, he's a leader on this team. Mark Rick says they really missed him this spring, and they really need him out there. And, of course, recovering from that foot surgery. Yeah, that fullback spot is such an unselfish position, and uh, they've got really some good depth there. Sutherland is a, really a good all-around football player, and you've got to be to play that position, blocking, uh, receiving. you got to be tough. you got to be unselfish. He's all those things. Richard Samuel on the carry right here. Benjamin Boyd making the tackle, but you see uh, Samuel running pretty hard. Got collared by the senior out of Thomasville, Georgia, Benjamin Boyd, who's been a special teams ace here for this Georgia program. G Day's a great day for a guy like Benjamin Boyd, Drew Williams, guys who basically during the regular season, their assignment, you know, kamikaze, they're special teams. They're not going to get, you know, and during practice, they're, you know, they're out there on the scout team and everything. But this is their chance to get out there and play position football, which, of course, they were stars in high school get a chance to do that here at Sanford Stadium. So third down and one with the ball at the 46 yard line. Really this is a good looking offensive line. They look good getting off the bus. Uh, Sturdivant, Vance, uh, uh, Davis, Anderson and, and Tripp on that right side. And then with those big tight ends it's going to be a really an offensive line that uh, people are going to be paying attention to this year. Samuel might have picked up the first down. I think he did as he got to the 44 yard line. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, uh, Clint Bowling, uh, the, the one injured starter not playing today. He's been out, not really injured, he's sick. He's had mononucleosis. But uh, Bulldogs replacing Fernando Velasco at center and Big Cheese Chester Adams at right guard. First and 10 at the 45 yard line for the red team. And we had movement. I think that was Corby Irvin, the defensive tackle that uh, jumped off sides unless he was pulled off. Yeah, you're looking at big Justin Anderson. He was a big boy. Bean, I think Coach Rick is calling him. Mike Bobo, the offensive coordinator leading the uh, Red team coaching staff today. Defense in the neutral zone, causing the offense to move. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Corby Irvin was not only in the neutral zone, he was in the offensive backfield. That's a five yard penalty. Yeah, and Coach uh, Bobo has really done a nice job here. Now, working with the quarterbacks, obviously, but uh, getting this offense uh, together. And, and he and Stacy Searles work very well together with the running game and the passing game. They were uh, hitting on all cylinders at the end of last season. Logan Gray going for the home run, looking for Kenneth Harris, and got shielded on the play by Eric Gregory Elliott, the cornerback. And Logan Gray one day is going to get his opportunity, and you better believe they're going to have some opportunities for him to get out of the pocket and run with that football. Yeah, Logan Gray will go into the season as the uh, number three quarterback. Blake Barnes, who had been the number three, transferred out of the program, I believe, to Delta State for his senior season. Looking to play. Yeah. Uh, transfer uh, down so he can play immediately without having to sit out. Logan Gray, really a different skill set than what we've seen here at Georgia recently at quarterback. Gray tosses it. This is Calvin Daniels breaks into the open and Calvin Daniels gets down to the 30 yard line and a first down. There is no fooling around with these running backs here. Look at the acceleration once he sees where the cut's going to be. He steps in there and he's he's sticking it up in there accelerating into the contact. He's not scared. Yeah, this guy walked on 
And uh, quite frankly, when we saw him last year, we didn't know who he was. And we don't know everything, but we have a pretty good grasp of who's in the Georgia program. He showed up, I think it was in the Western Carolina game, and we were trying to find out, scramble who to find out who this guy was. Uh, but he had a pretty good season last year in a reserve role. Gray got tagged. That was Chad Glower, the cornerback, uh, the young man out of Stars Mill High School we were talking about earlier, who came on the uh, corner blitz and got the uh, sack. Yeah, trying to get four receivers out into the pass route here. He had a guy work in the middle of the field. He might have uh, had a chance to hit a big play on and uh, running back underneath. And how about Chad? You got to like the technique. He double is a two-hand tag, not just a one-hand, but a two-hand tag. See Willie Martinez there. Boy, his defense played big in that bowl game against Hawaii. Just tremendous depth uh, at each position group that he has this year. Expecting another great year out of that defense. Logan Gray on the quarterback keeper. Logan Gray. Let's see where they're going to spot this thing. Brad Arsenault says they, that he tagged him at the 23-yard line. I think that's where they're going to spot it. 21. That's a fun game when they uh, when they're not allowed to hit you. I tell you what, he looks like he's he's got some game. A couple of years down the road, he's going to be the man. Third down and one. Ball at the 21-yard line as we're down to less than a minute and a half to play in the 2008 Georgia G Day game. Stick around. Coming up in the weeks ahead, we'll have what we call our enhanced version of the G-Day game as Gray goes for Michael Moore, and that got broken up by Eric Elliott. Allison? I'm here with Frank Ross, the captain of the 1980 National Championship Georgia Bulldog team. Frank, what's it going to take for these guys to bring another national championship to Georgia? I think, number one, they got you know, you got to put the team first, and, and every player on the team has got to accept their role and a lot of times you have guys that have started and have to accept a, a second team role, but they're on the special teams and they're willing to do that to the best of their ability. And every part plays a significant uh, aspect of winning a national championship. And one of those guys is going to be your son who will be here in the fall, Bryce. And he's looking to play a number of different positions, right? Well, right now, the, the recruit is a jumbo athlete. Uh, they really didn't have a position where, they, you know, he's a big guy, ran fast, strong. So they're going to start at tight end. But we had some, a lot of teams recruit at defensive end. And some even looked at him as being an H back or a fullback. All right, great. Well, we'll watching Bryce coming up. Thanks, Frank. Guys. Thank you, Allison. And we had a chance to visit with Bryce. On the dog report, had he and Christian Robinson, a couple of the incoming freshmen. I tell you what, uh, Frank's got to be awful proud of that young man, Frank, and and, and his wife. Uh, Bryce is a tremendous young man. I'm, and yeah, if he's came just down to, to Georgia and Auburn, where his mom went to school, incidentally, and decided to, to follow in his dad's footsteps. Uh, Vince Vance down there. They're checking him out. Left knee. Yeah, this is the this is the kind of thing that. Uh, he was one minute away from yeah. getting through the spring game. Yeah. You know, and Mark Rick, they 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 cut the uh, quarters from ten to eight, and now Mark's going to be thinking, man, we should have cut them maybe to seven. Absolutely, can't <laughs> afford to lose these guys. Hopefully, that knee brace is going to protect him there. Vince is a big kid, or big young man, six eight, three twenty, junior out of Hinesville, Georgia. You see Coach Rick down there, making sure everything's okay. Catch Sports Night weeknights at 6 and 11 Eastern here on CSS. Tune in on Monday night at 6 o'clock Eastern for a feature on uh, Kentucky Wildcats quarterback and NFL hopeful Andre Woodson and a look back at the preseason games over the weekend and the uh, start of the first week of the baseball season with uh, our Major League expert Brian Jordan. Well, hopefully that knee will be fine. Uh, expecting Vince Vance to play a lot of football this year. Uh, one note about Frank Ross quickly, really a physical inside linebacker. He was a guy that, you know, if he got your hands on you, you were going down to the ground. And a guy that brought it every day, whether it was Saturday or Tuesday, really proud to be his teammate. And Frank, I think, is short from Francisco because he's uh, yeah, from he's Spain, from right? Barcelona. Yeah. We gave him a little static about that way back when. Delorio going to the air and intercepted. Intercepted by Knox. John Knox will bring it back the other way, and John Knox will be tackled at about the 25-yard line. So John Knox, we've, we've seen a lot of John Knox today. 
Redshirt freshman, uh, Coach Mark Rick believes this guy's going to really help provide them some depth at the safety position. He's had a, a pretty good day for the second team defense. Well, I tell you what, if he keeps this up, he's going to do a lot more than provide quality depth and just reads the quarterback, knows where the ball's going. It's safety. you got to anticipate that and read it. And he jumped that route and showing off the athleticism there. He's physical uh, as far as the tackling goes and really uh, very athletic when you see him get out in space and make plays like that. Well, we're down to 58 seconds, but I think, you know, John Knox is a guy that, you know, a, a name that we've seen here today that we had not seen before. I think Caleb King certainly did not disappoint. Richard Samuel showed some things. Uh, Justin Houston, yeah. Vance Cuff, uh, Akeem Dent, Logan Gray, a lot of young talent on this uh, Bulldog squad. Akeem Hebron yeah. had, had the fumble recovery and, and the return. So guys that we, you know, we've been, we, we'd, we've heard about because they were recruits, but they redshirted. And when, you know, they redshirt, you have a tendency to kind of forget about them because you don't read about them and, and see them on a daily basis. But uh, here's the kind of their first chance. Caleb King will be special. Now, I don't know how much he's going to play with Noshan getting the rock, but when Noshan needs a breather, they won't hesitate to get number four in the football game. He showed a lot today, and I know fans wanted to see him and get a good look, and they had to be impressed with what they saw out of number four. Well, I think, you know, you just don't know. I think that's the thing that we took out of last season. Remember when last season started, that opener against Oklahoma State, the number one tailback was Craig Lumpkin. Number two was Thomas Brown. No Sean Marino was number three as Richard Samuel gets the carry. Doesn't get very far. But Lumpkin hardly played. Unfortunately, his senior season derailed by injury. Thomas Brown ended up getting hurt, too, but came back and still had a pretty good senior season. But no Sean Marino was the story. He was the number three tailback on opening day. And with the quality depth they have in 2008, one injury here or there won't be a big problem for this Georgia Bulldog team. I like Keontae Tripp and what he's done at right tackle. Uh, you know, they say he's committed to, to be an outstanding player, and they're going to have two young, outstanding, very athletic tackles in Sturdivant and Tripp uh, come Georgia Southern time. Gray hands it off, and that's Calvin Daniels. Yeah, I, Mark Rick says about Keontae Tripp, that might have been the final play of the game. You know, he is he's so he's such a freak of nature, so gifted athletically, that he can screw it up halfway and still get it. They, they've looked good today. They've uh, you know, shown off some great young talent. Our overall, it's really been a nice spring as they get ready for what should be a great football season. Well, the uh, red team beats the black 17 to three to wrap up the 2008 Georgia G Day game. And we'll come back and wrap things up from Sanford Stadium in just a moment on CSS. Hey, thanks for stopping by. You know, I, I followed your character. It doesn't cost anything to go to college. A house costs probably like $10 or something. My baby brother costs 70 cents, or about like 75 cents. Call Queensboro National Bank and Trust. What's the champion difference? Over 55 years of experience. Factory direct pricing. The good housekeeping seal. Exclusive comfort 365 glass. Replacement windows. Patio rooms. Entry doors. Vinyl siding. The champion difference is your easiest home improvement project ever. Say. You look great today. Thanks. You too. For your free in-home consultation, call, click, or visit our champion showroom today. Trust, Trust champion. champion. Defeated the Blacks 17-3 to put the wraps on the 2008 Georgia Bulldogs spring football practice. Our Allison Williams is down at midfield with Matthew Stafford. Matthew, your third year now here at Georgia. What was the one thing you tried to really work on this spring? Uh, just get my completion percentage up and, uh, you know, trying to complete some more balls to help, uh, help the offense move. Did you have fun out there today? I did. You know, I wasn't out there for too long, but I had fun while I was out there. And what are you looking forward to most this fall? Uh, just getting a chance to play again. You know, uh, it's great to play here in Athens in front of these fans and uh, should have a good team coming back, so we're excited. What do you think will be the strongest aspect of your offense? I don't know. We, uh, we got a bunch of good wide receivers, a good offensive line, good running backs, as everybody knows. So, uh, you know, I think we'll be pretty balanced. All right. Well, good luck in 2008. Right, thank Thanks, you. Matthew. Matt? All right, thank you, Allison. So, Buck, the red team beats the Blacks 17-3, to and this is just uh, 
you know, this is the uh, this is the, the start of it all. A Georgia team that in August may be number one, maybe number two in the national polls. Uh, and uh, critics believe a chance to play for the BCS National Championship when it's all said and done. Today we got a chance to take a look at a lot of the guys that are going to be the up-and-comers, maybe not this year, but the future of the program. Well, yeah, and some big things. Uh, Keontae Tripp, we talked about at right tackle, is going to be big. Caleb King being a backup running back will be huge. They've got great depth all across the board. Uh, awesome coaching staff. I think they're going to make a run at this thing this year. At the wide receiver core, uh, Muhammad Massaqua did not play today, but he'll come back as the number one receiver. But we did see uh, Michael Moore have a pretty good ball game in the first half. Yeah, and I thought Troop made some plays out there. Aaron White looks good. Again, they've, they're really deep and uh, experienced at wide receiver. It's going to be tough to get playing time there. Well, we'll come back uh, at the end of August, early September, and get this thing started again with the uh, Georgia Southern Eagles. That's going to do it for the Georgia Spring Football game. The executive producer of CSS Sports is Steve Thomas. The senior coordinating producer is Russ Aaron. Today's game has been produced, uh, produced by Steve Graham. For more information on CSS, you can log on to our website, css-sports.com. And now for Allison Williams, Buck Ballou, and the entire CSS team, I'm Matt Stewart. Good afternoon from Sanford Stadium where the red beats the black in the Georgia G-Day game. Welcome to the Dog Report. I'm your host, Matt Stewart. Coming up in the next 30 minutes, we'll visit with graduated wide receiver Sean Bailey, who's getting ready for a potential NFL career, and with men's tennis coach Manuel Diaz, who is attempting to lead the Georgia Bulldogs to a second consecutive national championship. But first, let's get you up to date with what's happening in the Bulldog Nation. G-Day is upon us, and once again, you'll be able to see the Dog Spring football game live here on CSS. Join me and Buck Ballou for that on Saturday at 2 Eastern. Among the things to watch for the play of linebackers Donnell Ellerby and Rennie Curran, plus that of cornerback Asher Allen, who may have received the most praise from head coach Mark Richt over the last month. Among those who you won't be seeing playing, senior defensive tackle Jeff Owens, who suffered a right shoulder separation and will be recovering until June. Wide receiver Tony Wilson will miss with an ankle injury, while Muhammad Massaqua and Kenneth Harris, who's had a very good spring, might also be out because of injuries. Also worth keeping an eye on three freshmen who have enrolled early and will be showcasing their talents for the first time, running backs Richard Samuel and Dontavious Jackson and wide receiver Tavares King. The men's basketball team hopes to build on its late season momentum that carried the dogs to the SEC Tournament Championship. Although Georgia ended up losing in the first round of the NCAA Tournament to a Xavier team that reached the Elite Eight, Dennis Felton's team has once again sparked some interest with what looks like a pretty good recruiting class. The dogs are set to sign four commitments during the month of April, including star forward Trey Tompkins out of Norcross Georgia High School, forward Travis Leslie, who was a teammate of current Georgia freshman Jeremy Price at Columbia High School, is the latest commitment joining guard Dustin Ware out of North Cobb Christian and for Drazen Slovarik. Coach Andy Landers wants to put the 2008 season behind him as soon as possible and hopes to name a team captain for next season in the not too distant future. The women's basketball team went 10 and 10 in their last 20 games after starting the season 13 and 0, losing to top ranked North Carolina in the second round of the NCAA tournament, breaking the Lady Dogs run of five straight Sweet 16 appearances. The gymnastics team will soon head to Penn State for the NCAA Regionals with another SEC championship and number one ranking in tow. The Gym Dogs just won the conference crown last weekend at the Gwinnett Arena and will compete in the Regionals at Coach Suzanne Yachlin's alma mater. Among the many honors coming out of the SEC championships, Cassidy McComb was named the SEC Freshman of the Year. The NCAA championships will be at the Stegman Coliseum at the end of April. And both the men's and women's swimming and diving teams finished seventh in the national championships. Chris Colwell was named National Diver of the Year, winning the championship in the one-meter springboard. Dogs diving coach Dan Locke was named National Coach of the Year. And Sebastian Ruol won the national championship in the 500-yard freestyle. Coach Jack Bowerly will join us on the Dog Report in a couple of weeks. All right, that gets you up to date on what's happening when we get back. Georgia tennis coach Manuel Diaz right here in studio and then later it's Sean Bailey as the dog report continues in just a moment. Well, 
I see my role as a kind of a mentor, a coach, if you will. Uh, sometimes it's tough, though. Hey there, welcome to sports. No, 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 no. no. Welcome to time, in another time. 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 When it all comes together, you know, I feel like any coach would. I feel a great deal of satisfaction that they have learned something. Turn on that turn off. Let's get going. Yes! Defining sports in the Southeast. Weeknights at 6 and 11 Eastern. Manuel Diaz has spent the better part of the last 30 years at the University of Georgia, first as an All-American playing for the legendary Dan McGill and then following in his footsteps last May, leading the Bulldogs tennis team to its fifth national championship. Now Diaz is preparing his team for another run at the crown, what would be his fourth as the Dogs head coach. And Manny Diaz now joins us right here on the Dog Report. Coach, thanks a lot for being with us. Congratulations on Thank what is a... Another great run. You guys are 18-1 overall, 8-0 in the SEC. How does this year's team compare to last year's national championship team that was undefeated? Well, you know, we're enjoying great success this year. I think it's more of a surprise for everybody. Um, you know, it was supposed to be a big rebuilding year. We lost our big horse, John Isner, um, uh, to graduation. And, you know, most people don't realize our number four player in that lineup, Matiko Merzel, from Slovenia, originally. Uh, he was the most valuable player of the SEC tournament and the NCAA championships. So we lost two great contributors and you know we weren't supposed to be anywhere near top you know three in the country uh, or you know going undefeated this late into the season in our conference uh, crown chase. Well you've been able to reach number three despite some adversity some injuries and we'll talk about those in a moment but last year's team dominating no team no opponent ever had more than two points in a match against you guys you ran the table of course earlier this year in the national football league new england patriots tried to run the table in the right. college basketball season the memphis tigers tried to run the table right. did you feel that kind of pressure running the table once you got towards the end of the season and you were still undefeated especially when you got into the national championships you know, uh, it was actually a little bit of an eerie feeling because the previous year we were in that same position. We were undefeated that whole entire year, winning the national indoors, winning the round robin in the SEC, going all the way to the national championship match, undefeated. One of our players suffered a, a big injury, tore some ligaments in his wrist and was not able to play in the championship match. We got beat. The fact that we lost, that was such a hard loss for all our guys. The, the fact that we had been through that, we benefited greatly. We knew how to handle that pressure. Uh, even though we had probably two new guys on the team at five and six, we have two great sh freshmen at five and six. Um, I think that with the leadership, the other guys had been in that position. Uh, they did a great job in handling the pressure. Lost a longtime rival Stanford in the 06 finals, but were able, as you mentioned, yeah. able to build on that and win in 07. John Isner, the big horse that you were talking about earlier, uh, at 6'9", maybe 6'10", yeah. whatever the case yeah. may be, very dominating. Yeah. Did his dominating size kind of epitomize the dominance with which you guys approached and finished the season? I think it had a lot to do with it. I think John, uh, you know, had established himself as one of the top players in the country the previous year and really was just a great point man for us. Um, you know, we had, uh, again, three seniors last year's team and it was just a well-balanced, well-balanced team. We had a lot of leadership and we had some great freshmen. We had three very good freshmen. We had tremendous depth and really we only lost a doubles point once all, all year last year. So, you know, uh, anytime you start with uh, a doubles point sort of in the bag and then you had Isner then you had the most valuable player in the NCAA championships at four we, we had two of the, of the best freshmen in the country at five and six it was just a well-balanced team the Georgia tennis team has won 38 consecutive SEC matches that's a string that's now over two years old you just polished off Alabama and Auburn this past weekend you got Kentucky coming in on Friday Vanderbilt on Sunday then you wrap up the regular season at Tennessee. I read after the Auburn victory that you said you'd sent a statement. What statement have you sent that you haven't already sent with 38 <laughs> consecutive victories? Well, you know, the, the, the fact that we are on, uh, going on the road and we're playing teams in the top 20, 25, and we are winning the close matches. That's really because people don't really realize, you know, we won a six to one against Alabama, but we got to three one and the remaining three matches were in the third set. So we're winning the close matches. We're making some close matches appear 
uh, you know, like their landslides, mm -hmm. but, but they're really not. And that's a true mark of a championship team, knowing how to come through those moments where, you know, y you can lose a lead, you can get yourself in a position where you might get beat, but all of a sudden you're winning 6-1. That's a, that's a great trait. Senior All-American Travis Hagelson, he's number six in the nation, had the clinching victory against Auburn this past week, and he's got four clinchers this year. Has he kind of stepped into that role of leadership? He's one of your co-captains. Sure has. Travis has done a tremendous job this year. He, he started the fall winning the most uh, the biggest uh, national event, uh, the All-America Championships uh, in the fall. And it's just been a tremendous, uh, you know, leader for our, for our young guys. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we've had a lot of guys step up. To be honest with you, um, we, we had freshmen from the previous year's team that, that, you know, you envision maybe them making a step up and, and contributing towards the middle of the lineup and doing a, a pretty good job. Well, you know, Jamie Hunt and Nate Schnug have had to play number one, number two, and number three singles at some point or, or another. And they've only lost like two or three matches between them the whole year. So we've had some tremendous performances from our young guys, including, you know, uh, you know, walk-on freshmen who have had to really come into action because, honestly, we, we've only played two matches this whole entire year with our whole crew of players. We've had a lot of injuries this year. Well, one of those big injuries, Luis Flores, who won the SEC Indoor Championships after taking the fall off, right. played on the pro circuit as an amateur, and then came back, won that SEC Indoor Championship, and then was basically sidelined for the next two months because of injury. He'd be up there in the national rankings. Oh, yeah if not for that. For sure, you know, Luis was number nine in the country at the end of last year, his junior year. He, uh, he, he's just a tremendous athlete. Uh, he uh, did a great job uh, winning the SEC championships in, in January, and all of a sudden, you know, he says, you know, my foot hurts a little bit. Well, we, we took a x-ray of it, and he has a stress fracture in his fifth metatarsal, and he was out six uh, weeks. Uh, recovering so it's good to have uh, it's good to have Luis back in the lineup doing what we did without him I think made everybody stronger made our team come together and we've we've benefited a lot from you know overcoming that adversity now you mentioned sophomore Nate Schnug and he's ranked number eight in the nation uh, is he a guy that's maybe the next in line for that leadership role uh, going forward go looking ahead to the next coming couple of seasons I think you hit it on the, on the head and Nate's a big kid he's a strong kid he's a very competitive uh, young man and he's had a tremendous opportunity to really step up and play the higher positions now and uh, you know he's uh, he's finding himself ranked in the top 10 in the nation so uh, you would say that uh, Nate would uh, you know going into next year would have a uh, just a great chance to, to play number one for our team and, and, and really get himself in a leadership position uh, and, uh, and help us down the road. Final question, three-time National Coach of the Year, five-time SEC Coach of the Year. You've now won three national championships. Your national championship last year broke your tie with the legendary Dan McGill, your former coach. <laughs> 18 SEC championships, tournament and regular season. Playing in the shadow and coaching in the shadow of Dan McGill's off is it comparable to the Bear to Bear Bryant in, in Alabama? I think you're to be commended for following in his footsteps. It's not a difficult position to be in. Well, I don't know about that, but it, you it know, is just, a difficult <laughs> position to be in, is what I meant to say. Uh, um, you know, just uh, you you probably can't find a, a happier uh, gentleman than than Coach McGill. Uh, you know, after we won the national championship last year, uh, you know, he's certainly been my mentor and uh, you know my coach and uh, just uh, you know still so involved. Emotionally in our program, he you know he continues to drop into my office a couple times a week, and it's just great to see him and uh, get his input and uh, just uh, listen to his jokes. <laughs> <laughs> you have to listen to his jokes, Manny. Thanks a lot for being with Appreciate us. It. Best of luck the rest of the season. Thanks, Manuel Diaz is the head coach of the men's tennis team. When we come back, we'll visit with Bulldogs graduated wide receiver Sean Bailey on the Dog Report. CSS-Sports.com is your source for the latest updates and information on CSS programming with complete schedule listings, show information, online contests, and more. CSS-Sports.com is truly your source for Southeastern sports on the web. Don't miss the latest CSS fan videos, news, updates, channel information, and showtime. All at CSS-Sports.com, your source for Southeast sports. 
Sean Bailey finished the drill and finished it strong with 39 catches for 615 yards and five touchdowns. The graduated wide receiver had more receptions in his final year in a Georgia Bulldogs uniform than he had in his first three seasons combined. Now Sean hopes to follow in the footsteps of his father, Stacy, and play in the NFL. And Sean Bailey now joins us here on the Dog Report. Sean, thanks a lot for being with us. You've already graduated, got your degree in real estate. Timing could be a little bit better on that, but hopefully you won't have to use it for a while. Tell everybody what you've been doing since the end of the football season. Uh, I've been training at uh, C CES, which is a uh, competitive edge sports with uh, Chip Smith, uh, just trying to get bigger, faster, and stronger. Well, Chip will help you do that. He's one of the best in the business. Of course, your dad, Stacy, played in the NFL. Has he had any pointers, if nothing less, just mental pointers for you as you get ready for this process? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I work out with my dad often, too. We go out, and uh, he just gives me a little bit of tidbits, uh, what scouts are looking for, uh, different things to work on for my game. I know your dad's in that business of training people, and he stays in shape. It's not many people that can go out and train with your dad, but your, your dad is one of those guys that you can go out and really work out with you, and he can push you. <laughs> yeah, sometimes he, uh, he outworks me. Uh, he's done a great job of staying in shape, and uh, he just has a lot of knowledge for the game. Now, how gratifying was your senior season? We already mentioned your stats for your senior season. Given that your true senior season, you spent rehabbing a knee injury that you suffered getting ready for the uh, Sugar Bowl against uh, West Virginia. So you're actually kind of a year behind the process of what you anticipated when you came to the University of Georgia. Right. Well, it was extremely gratifying uh, to have a, uh, a year-ending uh, knee injury and to be able to come back strong and uh, contribute to the team. Um, it, it's something that uh, I'm truly blessed and thankful for. Indeed. And uh, how devastating was it for you to suffer that knee injury because you were coming off a very good SEC championship game against LSU. And, you know, a lot of people would argue that you were just starting to peak in your college football career when, while preparing for the Sugar Bowl against West Virginia, you suffered that knee injury and suffered that setback, and it took you a year to get back from that. Right. Uh, like you said, I, I felt like I was uh, approaching my peak. I was coming up uh, ultimate high and to go all the way back down to ultimate low. It was tough, but uh, it was a humbling experience. And uh, I, I think I took advantage of the time off and uh, learned a little bit more about myself and about the game. How were you able to take advantage of that? Were you also able to take advantage of that academically because you've already got your degree out of your way? A lot of guys, as they get ready for the NFL, still don't have that degree out of the way. You're fortunate in that uh, you do. Right. Uh, well, the extra year definitely helped. Uh, gave me more time to uh, prepare and uh, do my studies and then uh, get into the film room and uh, just learn, learn about myself as a player, uh, critique other players and uh, add things to my game. Uh, you always seem to have your biggest games against the LSU Tigers. Your first touchdown catch of your career came against LSU. As we mentioned a few moments ago, you had the two touchdown catches in the 2005 SEC championship game thrown by DJ Shockley. What do you remember about that game and was there anything in particular about LSU that got you jacked up ready to play? Yeah, uh, LSU is a, a very um, aggressive team. They like to play that man-to-man -man coverage. So uh, we like to take advantage of that and uh, get a couple deep passes in there and it's, it's you versus the other guy and nobody else and uh, it, it was fun. What do you remember most about that 2005 SEC championship game? The uh, final game or next to last game for DJ Shockley as the starting quarterback for the Georgia Bulldogs but a resounding victory in front of the home folks to win that SEC title. Yeah uh, we got to play in the Georgia Dome. Uh, it was the first time I've ever won any kind of championship in my life. Uh, it, it was a, a great atmosphere and uh, catching two, two touchdowns was awesome. Now another team that seemed out seemed to bring out the best in you, Georgia Tech. You're the two longest receptions of your career came against the Yellow Jackets in your freshman year. And then in your senior year, you had the 55-yard catch against Georgia Tech. Was it really special for you kind of as a capper to your career, although you had the Sugar Bowl still to come, to have that kind of performance in your final game against the biggest rival on the schedule? Yeah, Georgia Tech is a big-time rival. It's an in-state game. Uh, in my career, we, we never lost to Georgia Tech. And... Uh, I mean, you grew up in Georgia, you're either a Georgia Tech fan or a Georgia fan, and it's a big game for all of our fans, so it's fun going out there and having good games. You also had the touchdown catch against Hawaii in the Sugar Bowl. Was that game a little bit anticlimactic, given that you guys beat Hawaii so soundly? And I think the coaching staff and the players are to be commended for taking that game 
uh, as seriously as they did because you guys could have easily come in there unprepared for that ball game, but it was obvious from the get-go that you guys were out, were you know, had overmatched this opponent. Right. I think it was a, a real similar situation to uh, 2005 when we played West Virginia. I don't think we came in as serious as we needed to, and uh, they, they snuck up on us. So we wanted to make sure that that didn't, didn't happen again, and uh, we took it extremely serious. And uh, I think it's a, a big uh, momentum builder for the team coming next year. Now, when you got done with that victory over Hawaii in the Sugar Bowl, were you looking around and saying there's got to be one more game? There's got to be one more game for us to have a chance at the national championship. And there were a lot of folks who felt like Georgia deserved a shot at that BCS national championship game, didn't get it, went to LSU instead, and, of course, they won it. Right. Um, I mean, we felt like we were playing uh, some of the best ball in the country, and uh, the chips just didn't fall our way. But uh, it definitely set us up uh, for this year to uh, be in that spotlight and have the chance that we do what we uh, are capable of doing on the field. Is it a little bittersweet for you, given that Georgia probably will enter this season preseason number one or number two, and certainly a favorite to play in the BCS National Championship this game this year? A little bittersweet in that you're not going to be around for that. It is a little bittersweet, but uh, I got a, a lot of a lot of friends, uh, same coaches still there and everything. So I'm happy for them to have that opportunity uh, going into the season. I just hope they take uh, full advantage of it. Now, when you arrived at the University of Georgia, David Green was the quarterback. So you played for David Green. You played for, in a, uh, not played for him, but played on an offense with David Green, DJ Shockley, and then Matthew Stafford. So you got a chance to see the last three quarterbacks. How would you ca compare and contrast those three quarterbacks, all of them different skill sets and right. different levels of uh, ability, but certainly all of them very good. Yeah, I think I was uh, extremely fortunate to play for uh, all three of those guys. They're all terrific. And like you said, they're all different. But uh, one thing they have in common is all three of them are, are winners, and uh, they, they all are going to have a chance of uh, definitely bringing SEC championships uh, to Georgia. Now, spring practice is underway. They'll wrap it up Saturday with the G-Day game, and uh, you won't be a part of it this time around. But it looks like Muhammad Massaqua will step forward and be the lead wide receiver this year. Kenneth Harris, I understand, has had a big uh, spring practice, and he's among the starters, and so is Chris Durham. Kind of handicap those three guys and tell us, you know, what you anticipate. And we'll talk about the younger guys, too, because there's some guys that are going to be playing into the mix. We'll talk about those in a moment. But kind of handicap those three guys and what you anticipate out of them this year. All right, like you said, uh, Mo is going to be uh, the veteran among the group, and uh, he's a big-time leader, uh, a real hard work ethic, and uh, he's somebody that the younger guys can look up to. Uh, Kenneth just has, has that, that size and that built uh, for a prototype receiver. And uh, he, he's definitely coming on. And um, I've been to a couple spring practices, and he, he, he's improving big time. Uh, Chris also has that, that, that body, that size, and that height. And he can, he can definitely go, go up and get that ball. So I, I think they're not going to miss a beat. They're going to be just as good, if not better. Yeah, with Harrison, Durham could play a little jump ball in the corner of the end zone, can't you? Now, um, you, since you've been to spring practice, you, you can give us a little bit of an opinion, because we haven't seen it yet and won't see it until the G-Day game. But uh, Tavares King? Young man, already uh, got out of high school early and is at spring practice out of Habersham Central. Right. Uh, and also Israel Root, a, a guy who redshirted and uh, doing a little baseball too, but spring football practice, expecting big things out of him. And the other guy that you haven't seen, uh, maybe personally, I don't think, but you, know, you probably have met him, A.J. Green. Your thoughts on those three young men and what impact they might have on the wide receiving core, if not this season, but in the future. Right. Uh, Israel is, is an athlete. As, as you said, he plays baseball as well. And uh, he, he's just a guy who, who worked really hard last year, red shirt, and, uh, to improve his game. So I'm expecting big things out of him. Uh, Tavares King, I, I think he did a, a great job of graduating early and coming in and, uh, and preparing and, and being able to play this season because he's gone through, uh, gone through the spring. And then, uh, like you said, I ha haven't seen uh, A.J. Green in person, but I've seen, I've seen film, and I'm really excited about him coming in and seeing what he can do. And I think I said Israel Root. I meant Israel Troop. Israel Root, he's another guy. Israel Troop, uh, who's uh, uh, playing on the team this spring. We'll look forward to seeing him in, in G-Day. And good luck to you. Thanks a lot for being with us, and good luck, best of luck, as the NFL draft is approaching later this month. Appreciate you having me. All right, Sean Bailey's been our guest on Dog Report. We'll come back and wrap things up in just a moment.